What's up video creator, it's videomark.net. Welcome to this title animation tutorial for Terminator Dark Fate. That's a lot of tease for the Adobe and Paramount Pictures competition for the movie Terminator Dark Fate, where you get to re-edit the trailer for the movie with actual footage. I have the pleasure of creating the Premiere Pro tutorial on the competition page. And it was really an honor to be uh, put right next to all these huge creators with huge following like Peter McKinnon and Cinecom.net, millions of followers, despite the fact that I, that my reach is very small. It was, uh, it was an honor really uh, with like creative residents like Tyler Babin and all these amazing creators and artists. Yeah, the tutorial I made was the Premiere Pro tutorial. And in this case, I wanna show you how to actually create a 3D cinematic title animation in After Effects without any plugins. And it's actually much easier uh, easier than you think. So without further ado, let's uh, dive right in. Okay, so here in After Effects, uh, let's create a new composition, a full HD composition. Okay, grab the text tool and just uh, write your text. Let's... Uh, Increase the size a little bit. I've used uh, Futura, the font, um, in the the actual trailer. Um, Futura and and Trajan are being used. So let's I'll I'll go with that for now. Of course, I encourage you to create your own version to make something to make it your own. I'm just showing you uh, a technical uh, way a workflow to create 3D titles. So we've created the text here. And um, I'm gonna bring back the handles with Control Shift H. And now let's center the pivot point. The shortcut for that is Control Alt or Command Option and Home. And then let go of the Alt key or the Option key. Control Home will center the text or this asset on the canvas. Then let's create a second one. And um, I don't know, uh, is back and as I said for this we're gonna go for Trajan the movie font boom maybe make it a little smaller like this and same thing here control alt home to center the pivot point control home to center to the canvas and then shift and arrows to bring it down a little bit and that's our text okay and now make these um, 3d toggle the, the that icon here and then in the text go to uh, geometry options and if this is grayed out in your case you have to go to the composition settings right click composition settings and under 3d render set uh set it to cinema 4d it might be set to classic 3d then it's grayed out and then when you have access to geometry options set the extrusion depth to 25 for the main text and the bevel style to convex do the same for that other text Geometry, bevel style, convex, extrusion depth, I don't know, 10 maybe. And now it's, it has depth already. You might not see it right away, but um, we're gonna work on the on the environment to, to, to give it a 3D look. But before we do that, go to the material options because you have to set the right material for your text to reflect the environment. So let's go back to the material options and then set cast shadow shadows to on ambient to zero and it looks like it's it has disappeared and the reflection intensity to 75 do the same thing for the other text material options cast shadow on ambient zero reflection intensity 75 and now what we're going to do is we're gonna bring in a an HDR file. Here's one that I created, um, a custom one that I created, um, and this will actually reflect on the text material and then give you the impression of a 3D, shiny 3D, maybe metal material. And I brought this in already, like Control I or Command I, here's that AE Lite HDR file. I'm gonna provide that as a download if you want on my website. Then bring in that, H, that HDR file in your timeline and it looks a little like this. 
and then right click and set it to environment layer. And you already see that it starts reflecting the environment, but there's a couple of steps that we need to make to, uh, to enhance that shiny look. And for that, go to the effects panel and look for HDR Compander. Apply that. And under the HDR Compander and the gain, set it to 0 0.55 and the gamma to 0 0.25. We're getting there, but it's still not perfect. And the next thing that we're going to need is levels. And what the levels does, it will crunch the contrast of that HDR file just a little bit. As you've seen, it's actually a couple of gray values. So bring that together here and then just crunch it. And you've got something uh, with more contrast and with more highlights. And now what you want to do is rotate this HDR just a little bit so it looks, um, it gives you some more reflections on the text. Uh, I've did that uh, I did that before, so in, under X rotation with this HDR map, set the X value to 150, the Y value to uh, 250, and the Z value to 115. And you can actually go ahead and use any HDR file. There's resources with like hundreds and thousands of HDR files. These are being used if you're not familiar with, familiar with HDR files for 3D animation mostly to illuminate your scene. And um, tools like HDR Light Studio, with that, which I use for my 3D products, uh, 3D videos and um, visuals. Um, is being used to hand paint those HDR images and place your lights by hand. These could as well be 360, 360 images. A couple of resources out there are providing um, um, 360 images for basically any environment outside interior. All that's left to do is uh, actually animate this whole thing. So um, go to your text and go to position and rotation and set a keyframe for position and Y rotation. Bring these over a little bit because that's your end position. And then the uh, that Z value minus 2,500. And it should be, no, not 250, minus 2,500. Boom, and then it should be behind or very close to your camera. And that Y rotation can be um, maybe 90 degrees. And then when we set the uh, the workspace and the preview quality to quarter, so it renders a little faster, you should see an animation right away. And that's basically what I've uh, what I've done in this case. And it starts. Uh, it looks really nice with these ref reflections um, on on that on that material. It looks like metal. Depending on your HDR file, if, as you can see here on the left side, it's really, it's very dark. So what you can do is bring in a, a light, layer, new, light, um, set the light type to spot, say OK, and then move this light around just a little bit and the point of interest here to the left side. So it's illuminating this part here and then tweak the cone and the intensity light options, bring it down just a little bit. So it's just accentuates this part on the left side and then maybe the cone angle that doesn't affect the right side too much. I had in that first example, in that final example, I had the case that this part right here, bottom left, is not really um, visible, but in this case it works. I don't know what's different, but that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's basically what we end up with. And what of course, what you could do is um, when you select this uh, text assets, hit the U key and then and then select all the keyframes, hit F9 to, um, to ease them. Of course, you want this to uh, find its final position a little slower. And um, you could actually go in and right click the position and then separate dimensions and then go to the Z position and this way you will have a little more control over the Bezier handles. Okay. And that's, that's basically it. So let's uh, do a quick RAM preview here again, set the quality 
a little lower so it animates a little faster. That's looking nice. And we forgot to animate, to actually animate the second text file here. So let's do that really quick and then set a keyframe for position. This is your end position. Again, minus 2,500, so it's coming from the back. F9 for easing. Minus 2,500. And whoop, and then just offset this just a little bit. So the first text is coming in and then the second one. And when this second text is close to the camera, you see this really nice depth and and, and um, reflection of, um, of this HDR map. And if you look at it closely, you might see this artifacts here. Beca that's because I exported that HDR file in a really low quality. So one uh, last thing that we want to do is apply a Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur to this um, HDR file, set it to five, and then it should look, set the quality to full, and it should look much nicer, and the um, the reflections should, should look uh, nice and smooth. And that's basically it. That's uh, actually the 3D text here. And the one thing that I added is a is a flare. And yes, I did promise no plugins. <laughs> That's true for the three D text, but for the for these uh, the, this kind of uh, flares, of course, there are nice plugins out there. What I used is Video Copilot's uh, Optical Flares, and there's no light uh, no light factory from Red Giant, I believe which I don't really use, but that's uh, just as good as Video Copilot. And let me show you real quick how this is done. Control Y, and then, okay, that's a new solid effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares, and then applied um, from the preset browser, Pro Presets, uh, which one was it? I think it was um, something with Anamorphic. Mini, I think it was mini anamorphic, yeah. Okay. And, oh yeah, and under the um, settings, set the color to red, which is a much better fit for, um, for Terminator. And here as well, this is, um, if you don't know Video Copilot or Optical Flares, this is actually a collection of flares stacked on top of each other. Set the layer mode to to uh, add, and then set the position of this flare right on the uh, on this text. And then, when we go to the brightness, uh, activate the keyframe. And what we want is the brightness to be zero when the text is in place. And then here it could be. Um, 500 so it gives us this really nice bright flare that let's move everything over a little bit so we have some space and then the brightness should start at zero over here and let's see what this looks like it gets brighter boom text coming in and this is flying in, come to, an, to a halt a little earlier, and again set the, activate the easing, and when we render this, it should look like our final animation. Yeah, and this looks really cinematic, it's, um, Really, just a matter of uh, minutes. I don't know how long did it take. And once you created this, of course, you can go in and change the text. The one and only Linda Hamilton. 
it's, it was amazing in the trailer to see her like getting out of the car and, and start shooting. <laughs> it's such such an iconic scene. I can't wait to see the movie. And um, yeah, that's um, basically how you would do that. And you can take this even further and create a Premiere Pro motion MoGraph template out of it. Um, so you actually don't even have to go back to After Effects and create different variations for this in um, uh, for your trailer. I've done this with another movie trailer um, last year. Um, you can see it here in the in the info card uh, or in the description below. And um, it's really so easy to create these different iterations and variations of these um, these motion graphics uh, animations with uh, with this workflow with MoGraph templates. So yeah, that's uh, basically how you would create this 3D title animation, cinematic title animation in After Effects. And again, three days left. Um, go ahead and uh, win these uh, $10,000. Really be creative, make it your own, uh, create different genres, uh, think outside the box, uh, stand out with your idea. And I've seen so many great entries already, getting so many messages. I got a message from from a father and his daughter um, unfortunately is too young for the competition and they were so excited and it's amazing to see this these talents it's such a young talent um, working um, on this on her, on her own version of this of this trailer maybe in the next competition she, she can she can be part of it I can't wait to see what you are coming up with just uh, um, upload your entry and um, with the hashtag create your fate. So that's the tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.